Good day pepper breeders. So this is our second major update to the community project to breed pink ahi charapita and a pink Brazilian pepper. So this video is going to have two parts. The first major part we're going to talk about some of the traits that we're observing in the F1 plants and then for the second part we'll do just a real quick demonstration of how to pot these plants up into a larger container size. So although I have two plants from each of the eight crosses for the community project, today I'm only going to pot up one plant from each cross, with the exception of the crosses with Shira Roja by Ahi Charpita, and that's because these plants are segregating one to one for purple and green, and I wanted to grow one plant from each of those crosses. So for talking about some of the traits that I'm observing in the F1, let's talk about Shira Roja by Ahi Charpita. So obviously it's segregating one to one for the purple gene, and then for wild type green. So these plants are heterozygous, so they have one copy of the purple gene. The same can be said for the plants of the cross, Fidelgo Roja by Ahi Charpita. So these two plants are the two reciprocal directions of the cross. And what I would like to point out to you here is that although this plant is purple and this plant is purple, when you look at the depth of pigmentation, how much pigment is accumulated, the crosses with Fidelgo Roja are a much deeper purple. So this is likely caused by additional additive genes that increase the concentration or increase the uh, production of anthocyanin compared to its degradation. The second note trait I wanted to talk about is that what myself and some other users are finding is that Shira Roja, as a parent, confers early flowering. So this plant, these flowers are being produced on the ninth inner node from the bottom. On this plant is being produced from the eighth inner node from the bottom, and on this plant is being produced at the seventh inner node. So I counted those before the video. So we have, on average, flowers being produced on the eighth inner node of the plant. This is very early, and I don't think it was caused by uh, root binding, which is definitely occurring in this population, or any sort of outside stress. I do believe it's genetic, and as I said, other users are finding the same thing. Um, the other point to make is that this is the plant of Habanada by Ahi Charpita. And if you look down in here, and I'm not sure if this is going to focus properly for you, but we do have flowers being produced as well. But these are being produced on the 12th or the 13th inner node on the plant. And so we do have some kind of early flowering trait that's available in Shiroha by Ahi Charpita. Whether or not that's useful for us, uh, we'll have to see as we grow out our populations. The third trait I wanted to talk about is another one that's occurring on this plant. So if you look at the base of this plant, you have all these axillary meristems, these side meristems that have broken and they've started producing shoots. So this is energy that's being taken away from the plant. Uh, so young expanding leaves, they're not a photosynthetic uh, net profitable or net producing thing until they're about 80% expanded. And so these were originally robbing energy from the plant. And I don't know if that's due to reduced apical dominance uh, in habanada or if it's some separate trait. But if you look at the other peppers, while you do see a little bit of this axillary meristem breaking, it's nowhere near as severe as what you see in habanada. And uh, after growing habanada for about three years, I can tell you these plants always produce these little side meristems. I don't know if that's going to be something that's highly detrimental or potentially even a positive thing. It may be that as these plants get older, if this plant, if this, if these, if this particular genotype does have a reduced apical dominance, it may make for a beneficial plant architecture. The last two crosses are yellow Brazilian starfish cross to sugar rush peach, right here. As you can see, uh, my mistake of over fertilizing in the first month caused me to burn the young meristem. And then after losing that meristem, we released apical dominance and side shoots came out. So that's not the end of the world, but next year I'm definitely going to reduce how much fertilizer I use in the first month. And that was quarter strength, so I think tenth strength is probably appropriate for these guys. And then the last cross was Ahi Charpita cross to Pink Habanero Long. And as you can see, just like in the uh, cross with Habanada, we do have some of this uh, axillary meristem breaking and a little bit of branching going on uh, immaturely. And as with habanero long and shiro roja, we'll have to see what, to what degree that occurs and uh, how detrimental that is to growth. 
So I'm super excited to see how these guys are going to perform going into flowering and fruit set. And as peppers produce their flowers on new growth, uh, to get a good representation of how these plants perform, I need to pot them up. Uh, we're getting to the point that they're getting root bound and growth is starting to slow down. And so today we're going to go ahead and pot up one plant from each cross into a larger container. And I'm just using these about four inch by four inch containers. And I think they're about uh, 500 milliliters. And so that'll be a good size for now, perhaps uh, even to complete flowering and fruit set. Again, I don't need that many fruits from these plants and I have no intention of growing them to their full size. So as long as I can get 100 or 200 seeds, that's five, six fruit, maybe eight fruit, that'll be pretty good. And I've got pretty limited space, so I don't really want to go much larger than this anyways for this F1 population. So with that being said, uh, here's going to be a quick demonstration of the easy way to pot up plants. So I can get these guys out of the way. So as I was saying, the plants are approaching the point that they're getting a little bit root bound. And so let's take a look at one of the bigger guys here. And so the easy way to get a plant out of its pot is just kind of massage the sides a little bit, loosen the soil from the container, and then you can push on the bottom to move it up a little bit. And then you can get your hand in there and pull it out. And so as you can see, the roots are starting to wrap around and they're starting to make a pretty, pretty uh, solid <laughs> uh, border of roots. And so we're well past the point that we need to pot them up. And so how we do this is we take our new container and we fill it up with soil and then we get a container that's the size that the plants are currently in and then what we're going to do here is just make an impression that we can set our plant into. Firm it down a little bit, put your uh, container in there, your uh, mold, fill it up all the way around the sides, pack it down just a little bit. You know, you want your levels, your containers to be to be even to what they used to be. And we'll pull it out. And what you're left with is a nice little impression. We'll see if I can tip it without destroying it. So I think you should be able to see that. And what that does is it makes it real easy to pot this guy up. Take your label out, take your plant, and look at that. Just drop it right into that hole. How perfect is that? Firm it in just gently, transfer your tag back over, and then you can set it to your done pile. There we go, nine more to do. So there you have it, a quick and easy way to pot up your plants without making too much of a mess and not disturbing the root ball unnecessarily. And so from here, these plants are going to go back to the tent where they'll be bottom watered. And then we'll make sure they've got a good water status in the potting mix for the next few days so that their roots will grow out into the new media. And uh, hopefully they'll reward us with some very beautiful peppers in the next few weeks here. So here we are, the product of our work. Uh, in the center of the tent here, under the best light distribution, we have all the F1 plants that we've potted up into their larger, potentially final containers. And then on the right, we have uh, the backup plants. So I have two of each cross, so these guys will be left just in case the main plant is an outcross or has some sort of major disease issue. And uh, we'll compare the fruit from the backups to the main guys, make sure we've got the uh, right cross growing in here. And then we'll move from there. So thank you guys for bearing with me with another update, and uh, until next time, farewell. Mm -hmm.